Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. You know, when uh, Einat asked me to come and speak about my life journey, well, I can tell you that uh, flying from Australia to Toronto over 24 hours on plane and almost two days, that's a quite a big schlep. So that's also a big journey. But seriously, I'm very, very grateful to be here today. And I'm also very grateful to stand here before you as a testament to the incredible power of hope, determination, and exceptional care provided by Shiba Medical Center. You see, 20 years ago, it seemed that I wasn't supposed to be here at all. When a sniper's bullet could have taken my life, silencing my voice and ending my journey. But fate had other plans, and so did the dedicated team at Shiba. My 21st birthday, as you just saw, didn't quite go according to the plan. My plan, I mean. Unfortunately, I remember every second of that day. As it happens, on that specific Friday, 4th of October 2002, I was supposed to be at home for a long-awaited long service leave on my birthday. But the girl I dated at the time, who lived in Switzerland, offered to spend the leave together in Israel. She managed to book flight ticket for Sunday morning. I quickly realized that if my seven days leave starts on Friday and my girlfriend arrives on Sunday, we will miss two days of speaking about our feelings or whatever 21 years old do. <laughs> so in order to leave the base on Sunday morning, I asked my commander to switch shifts with another soldier. Little did I know how much this decision is going to change my and my family's life forever. I'm going to divert from what I wrote because I wanted to share with you what happened on the day with my own words. So we were on patrol in the city of Nablus, and we were using an armored jeep because tanks are heavy and they can't maneuver very easily. And you know those days that nothing goes wrong? You know everything and you say, what else is going to happen? That was that day. It started by the fact that our jeep was broken down and we had to drive into a safe house where we can park until the mechanics were able to come in and fix it. And they did it in the old-fashioned Israeli way. They, uh, they uh, fixed it with a sticking gum and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and sticky, sticky tape and chewing gum, sorry. And they said, don't worry, it will hold. Just do us a, a small favor, don't drive faster than 40 kilometers an hour. That sounds very reasonable to us. And a few minutes later, we heard on the radio that a tank was stuck in the middle of the city. We were quite close, so even though we could drive only 40k an hour, we were there first. And in the combat that started um, around that tank that was surrounded by hostiles, the one sniper, about 150 meters, you are metric here, right? Meter. The 150 meter away sniper uh, managed to shoot one bullet that penetrated between my helmet and the anti-bullet vest right in the middle and it caught me off guard. Fast forward, the seconds and minutes after I got injured were quite surreal. I was dragged into the Jeep that could not drive more than 40 kilometers an hour and taken as quickly as possible out of the battlefield to rendezvous with the doctor. Now a twist. Funnily enough, that poor doctor was a reservist and psychiatrist and the last trauma case he saw was mental, not physical. And thank God he didn't give me the, and how does that make you feel, treatment. <laughs> I remember hearing him saying, I don't know what to do in this case. Very reassuring. However, he did the main thing right as he kept me breathing while using the dental suction machine to suck my blood out of my airways. I was then airlifted by an Israeli Air Force chopper to Sheba, and when we touched down at Sheba, I was worried. 
not so much about my own situation because the world looked pretty good with so much morphine in my blood. And so did the combat nurse in the helicopter true story. <laughs> That's not the one I married. So. I was concerned about my, my mother. Since my ability to speak was limited, to say the least, it was difficult for the staff to communicate with me. At some point, they gave me a piece of paper and a pen so that I could write messages. At that point, I had only one request from the officer accompanying me. Uh, can you put the first slide, please? And I rarely show this. I asked them not to contact my mom, as I feared she would be unnecessarily concerned. Um, the officer looked literally looked down at me and said in a way that I will never be able to imitate. He said, honey, we're going to call your mom. <laughs> Why don't you want us to call your mom? And I wrote, I was honest, I wrote, I promised her that I'm not doing anything dangerous. <laughs> at some point I figured I didn't have a choice, so I asked to write her a note. I wrote... Mom, don't be mad at me. I love you. That was so stupid of me. <laughs> Thinking my mom would be mad at me or disappointed in any way. The following two and a half years at Chiba taught me the greatest lesson of my life. They say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, in my case, it took a city to fix me. City of health to be exact. I was helped to become normal again, and mind you that my friends would say functional because I was not normal to begin with, <laughs> by doctors, nurses, speech therapists, secretaries, cleaners, logistics specialists, and many others. The rehab process wasn't easy for me, and it wasn't easy for the Sheba staff either. Learning something I already knew to speak was exhausting, embarrassing and painful, very painful. But when I tell people today that I was critically injured by a bullet in my face, they say, but it doesn't, it doesn't show. And when I speak to you today and in three other languages, without no one noticing anything in my speech, that's quite a miracle. A miracle done entirely by Sheba. I'm being asked very often if I could go back in time and choose a different path in life that doesn't include being injured, would I choose it? And I always say no. My injury made me who I am today. My injury taught me the, most, uh, the lessons that put me where I, I am, and I'm grateful for that. But a few years ago, in a radio interview, after I gave them this standard answer, they followed up and asked what I think my mom would have answered the same question. It took me a few seconds to say that I am sure that my mother would have 100% skipped it if she could. Today, I live in Melbourne, Australia with my wife, Avishag, and our 14-year-old son. When I learned that Chiba Medical Center was looking for a director for Australia, I applied immediately. I could not believe I would have the opportunity to give back to the people and place that gave so much to me. I was fortunate to pass through the selection process and had the most incredible honor of my life when I was made CEO of Friends of Sheba Australia. And so today I stand before you so lucky in so many ways. In the past two years, I've woken up every morning feeling blessed that I can give back to the people that saved my life and help others to get care they deserve. Thanks to Sheba doctors' knowledge and professionalism, I am able to use what's left of my tongue, to share Sheba's vision of hope without boundaries. The sniper that shot me trying to hurt Israel ultimately did a huge service to our cause. Thanks to him, I'm able to stand here tonight and share the story of the doctors, nurses, and Sheba staff with you. I would like to finish with a reflection on my journey of learning to speak again. It was my physiotherapist at Sheba, the person that caused me the most physical pain in my life, that taught me the value of pain. 
because it gave me the notion that I was making progress. In his words, pain is not an enemy, rather a friend. The pain is felt when I stretch beyond the boundaries that I thought I could reach and grow and make a better impact. Pain is a sense I must embrace, not fight. And the more pain I feel, the closer I get to achieving my goal, he used to say. And boy, he was right. Nobody, nobody likes to feel pain, and we always try to avoid it. But we also grow when we experience pain. We build muscles when we push ourselves a little beyond what we are accustomed to knows anyone who visits the gym. Why am I telling you this? Well, I'm sure each of you came here knowing it's a fundraising event. And if you didn't, surprise! <laughs> I dare to assume that many of you already have a figure in mind that you thought would be appropriate to donate. Or that you already wrote on your platform a figure that you feel comfortable with. But let me ask you this. Let's grow together. Your impact will be more significant if you stretch a bit. If you feel a little pain and go the extra mile. Right now, there are young soldiers on patrol or on dangerous mission, and unfortunately, some of them will be wounded, seriously wounded. But in that misfortune, they will be treated by one of the best rehabilitation hospitals in the world. And so, as we gather here tonight, thousands of miles away from where my journey began, let us celebrate the remarkable power of hope, healing, and human connection. Let us honor the work of Shiba Medical Center and the countless lives touched by their dedication to a brighter, healthier future. Together, we can make a difference, and together we can ensure that Shiba continues to be a beacon of hope for all those who need it most. So I ask you to give generously. Give to the point of feeling stretched and make a long-term impact on the hospital that cares for those who keep us safe. Thank you very much. Toda Rabah.